the affairs out for shareholders 1 is to 16 and also in terms of the merger being effective in retrospect from 1st of April 2008. RIL and RPL, both stocks absolutely flat in trade, but is it likely to pan out that way over the next couple of days, weeks and months? Well, take a look at what is it in for the stocks. Both RIL and RPL stocks are seen trading in tandem in line with the swap ratio. One is to 16, so the value of RPL from here on will depend on how the market expects or behaves with the RIL stock. Well, the timeline is pretty simple. Shareholder approval by April 2009. So sometime in September, the merger is expected to be completed between both the entities. And of course, after that, a month or two down the line, the Reliance Petroleum stock is likely to be delisted. Uh, so it happens pretty uh, fast from here on in terms of the entire merger process. Well, post-merger, what happens? The combined entity will have more say in how the Sensex 30 really behaves. The weight right now is about 15.65. Well, that will move up to about 16.72. A lot of index ones, perhaps, will also have a lot more holding of RIL automatically because the holding or perhaps the weight in the Sensex, the index goes up. CLSA is saying that RPL's value is close to about 92. Remember, the stock's trading close to about 75, so almost a 20, 22 odd percent jump from here. That's, of course, again, based on the value of Reliance Industries and how CLSA sees that uh, panning out over the next couple of months. Well, investors, that's the other big uh, area or set of uh, people who will be bothered about all of this. Merger is seen positive for uh, in terms of EPS, nothing very large, but about half a percent to one and a half odd percent. This despite the four percent odd dilution that is seen for minority shareholders. Well, minority shareholders will own more of the company, the combined entity. Almost 43.1 percent of the merged entity is what minority shareholders will hold. When I say minority, of course, it includes everybody else apart from the promoter holding. Promoter holding, well, that comes down actually to about 53 percent if you include the non-voting treasury stock as well. Well, in case the Treasury or perhaps new Treasury stock was issued, that would not have been the case. Promoter holding would have actually moved up from here. So uh, some of the key salient features of this entire merger process, both from a stock perspective and, of course, for investors.